hey guys you're welcome to another video we're going to be continuing our uh, zig tutorials and so in this video we're going to be looking at unions so in order to properly explain unions i think the best way to do it is using an example so say we want to create a function that will calculate some results and give a return that result um, but the issue is the result that we want to be returned is dependent on the input that is passed into the function so what i'm trying to say is say we have a calculate function that has an input say the input is an is a u8 and we're gonna omit the return type for now and now we're gonna have a switch statement on that. so we're gonna switch on the input basically and so we could say that here if we return say the input value is zero then we're gonna want to return let me just put the return statement here and we're gonna want to return say an integer so let's, let's say this is an i32 so i could return something like 30 and when we have one as the input we might want to return like a string so something like hello and when we have two as the result or as the input then we might want to return like a floating point value so something like this should work and you know else um let's just say we want to return um is zero um or okay let's just return a string when we don't have anything so let me fix that so here we're gonna return a string hello right and we're gonna put everything as it should be but now you see that we have an error here because here okay this is supposed to be a one now uh, we have an error here because we don't know what the return type is supposed to be in this case so what you know we in this case this function can return different results it can return an integer a floating point number or a string uh, which is a byte array um, so how do we figure out exactly what to specify as a return type now we have a couple of options and one of the first things we could do is to use a struct right so i'm going to create a result struct here and then we could specify the value i'm going to say an int is going to be an i32 um we're going to have like a string is going to be a a const u8 and we're also going to have a float is going to be an f32 just like that and here we could specify the result um here we go and now all we have to do is wrap the result here as an int and result um, here is going to be a float and here result the string and so with this you can see that um, now there's a, there's one more change we have to make on the struct because here you can see that some of these values will be optional depending on whatever we want to return so in this case we're going to make these optional and we also have to set them to null by default and now we have this really concise syntax and this is really cool this is probably going to do what we want but of course now if we const result and then we could do something like calculate and the input is going to be so let's pass in zero so that we <coughs> get back an int and what what we could do is log this and put the placeholder and we're gonna log the result and i think i need an any here so what this is going to do is print out the values in the entire struct. So if I if I run this, you're going to see that it's going to print out the int. You can see it's 30, the string is null, and the float is null. So you can see that this actually satisfies what we need. But the problem with this solution is that this is actually uh, wasteful. 
because it actually you know it's going to allocate the same value for this this and this so if we want to see just how wasteful this is then what we can do is std log.info and we could do size of result and here we do a size of um result so we want to check the size of the results struct and now if we run the code we're gonna see that the size of this is 32 bytes so regardless of you know the fact that this is just um this is an i32 so this is supposed to be just four bytes and so this is going to be the size of four bytes another uh four bytes which is going to be eight plus the plus 16 bytes which is going to be 32 bytes so <clears throat> Um, you can see that even even though we're not um, these does not have values um, it, they're actually taking um, memory so which is an issue um, so what we can do is instead of using a struct we could use a union and what unions allow you to do is regardless of whatever um, so unions will tell you that you can still have all these fields as you have them but only one of these fields is going to be active at one time and also the size of a union is going to be the size of the largest item inside of this so in this case this is going to be the string so the string is 16 bytes and so the size of the entire union is going to be 16 bytes um so if i do if i change this to union and here i'm going to remove these nullable whatever and here you can see that um so um I need to undo that right okay and i need to delete this one so here we're back with the data we're supposed to have and now we're using a union so what we can do is we don't have to change anything here because this is exactly how unions are initialized in zig so the only difference now is if we try to print this um you're probably going to be surprised with the results you're going to get and you're going to see first of all that the size of our results has shrunk down from 32 to 24 and the question you might have is wait why do we have this to be 24 instead of 16 as i've said earlier and the reason is because there is something called tagged unions which we're going to be talking about in a bit and so zig in debug mode is going to tag this union to know exactly what type is currently active at any time at any point in time so speaking of being active let's take a look at how this is done so in this case we're going to do results dot int to print out the value that we just got and so here you're going to see that we get the 30 as we expect right now what happens when we try to access the float value or the string value so if i try to access the float value for example i'm going to get in an error from zig so you can see we panic and it says access of union field while field int is active so you can see that we cannot access the float field because the int field is currently active and that's exactly what it tells us here so the result that was given from the calculate function is for is for the int field of the result so only int can be checked right and so that the reason why we have the 24 bytes in the size of the union is because there's a tag there's a hidden um, size tag or tag that specifies exactly what field is currently active in the union and so if we build in release mode the size of the union is going to be 16 bits and so the the question now becomes how do we know exactly so let's say we call this function with some variable that we don't have control over how do we figure out exactly what um what which which part of the union is currently active basically so how we're gonna do that is using tagged unions so tagged unions are useful 
uh, because they allow us to figure out exactly. So, so, so this is similar to like Rust enums. Uh, Rust enums are exactly how tag genius work, and you can just figure out exactly. Uh, let me just show you an example and stop ranting about nonsense. So here, what we're gonna do is again, we don't have to change much. We just add an enum here, just as you can see, and this is all we need to add to be able to make our union tagged. We just specify an enum inside of the parentheses for our union, and we have tagged unions. And so what this allows us to do now is we can we can switch on the results and we can check which one of the results is actually uh, what we're looking for. So we can do something like result.int and, or we can even make this easier by doing .int, which is the short form syntax from Zig. And so we have the .int and we could um, stdlog.info and here we go let's put that in there and we could print out the result.int because we now know that the value that we need is this oh and one more thing we could also do is do the um capture so so we could capture the value here and the type of this value is going to be the integer that we expect right so here we don't have to do this um so we could print the value here and we could do the same with um dot float and value log dot info just like that and just so we can distinguish i'm gonna add some print um int value and here we're going to do a string and so print out the string just like that and so we have covered all the types that are representable by this tagged union so this should work um, if we don't have any compile errors and so zigbeard run and yeah, so you can see that it prints out the int value of 30 because it actually can switch on this enum um, for the tagged union and figure out exactly what type of the union is currently active. And then we can switch on that and get whatever value that we need from it. And yeah, another thing we can do is um, let's change this just to make sure that everything works. And I'm going to change this to, um, sorry, I'm going to change this to one and run Zigbeard run again. And just so you see now that we have switched from the int value to the float value. So depending on whatever is returned, the switch will help us figure out or coerce to whatever type that we need. And we save memory and we still get the type safety that we expect from the Zig programming language. Um, that'll be all for this video. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.